Okay, so this is for chapter nine under calibration for quality and precision measurement. Um, I won't be with you guys for the next two Tuesdays, so I wanted to go ahead and record uh, some content. That way you would have that to kind of go along with what you guys are reading in the book. So I just want to talk about chapter nine, and that's calibration, and talk about gauge calibration uh, specifically. So I, all I did was grab a couple tools out of our uh, shop boxes and I'm going to just gonna walk us through calibration of a couple of tools and um, the rest of the stuff is, is pretty good in the book. I've already set out a quiz for you guys to do. I'll launch all that stuff here as soon as I'm done. So um, you can go ahead and work on that. It's all due by Sunday night at 11.59. So um, just kind of specifically I want to talk first about using the travel indicator and so I've got a travel indicator already set up here. And so as I'm looking at this thing, especially if you're brand new to using indicators or the world of, uh, of indication and, and any kind of precision measurement, um, as I'm looking at the tool here, every one of these marks along here is one thousandth of an inch. And so then we have the revolution counter. So as I go through, I've got one hundred thousandths. 200 thousandths, 300, 400, 500. Now indicators like this come in all different uh, variations. So you can get um, ones that will uh, go to two or three inches of travel. These typically uh, you'll see them uh, as just kind of that one inch travel is, is pretty pretty common. So. Um, the pros and cons in having something that has a longer than one inch travel or even just a one inch travel, the longer you go, the more opportunity you have um, to get out of tolerance. So uh, the longer travel that you have, um, even if, if this indicator was just like a hundred thousands or even like a test indicator that might only have thirty thousands, the more I go longer and longer and longer and longer, the more reach that it gets, the more opportunity I have for um, variation to come into come into play. So as I've got this one, if I want to really check something and um, come in and have some pretty good uh, goals for calibration. So if I'm the QC guy, if I'm the QC person, uh, somebody's brought their tools for me to check, or if I'm just checking my own tools for a job that I'm working on, um, I've always got to come in and, and, and some things I've got to trust and some things I have to have to go in and, and make sure that they're right. Now I've already checked all of these gauge blocks and these are just the same gauge blocks that we used the other day in class. So I've got a 250 gauge block here and um, clean it off. Go ahead and grab a piece of paper and I can ring it through just to make sure that it's going to be nice and flat. So I want to make sure that these are really flat. So uh, a lot of times I just lay it out here, go across, already cleaned off my granite table. Now whenever I pick this up on here, I want to just raise the needle for the indicator, set it up on there. And so if you look, there is a slight variation from, this should be 250 thousandths. Now part of that comes in the indicator. Now I want to watch the whole travel as we go through. The rest of the, the setup is pretty stable. So I go down and double check I'm at zero. Come in here. I'm not quite at, or I'm a little over 250. So slide it out. Do the same thing with my next one. This gauge block is 500. So 500 is off about a half of that as well. Should be a 750. Now if you look, <clears throat> as I push and pull on this indicator, look I get a range of almost a thousandth of an inch. So what's that tell me? I've got some variation in my tool itself. Now, that can come in a ton of different places. 
Um, I'll show you some of that here in just a second. Here's my one inch. One inch falls the same category. All right. So now this indicator is is really only a it's a one thousandth indicator, and it has a a travel of one inch on it. Now a couple things that can factor into if if I'm really getting good readings or not. My indicator sitting in there straight. Yeah, it's pretty straight. Um, straight up and down that way. I can double check that by bringing in uh, gauge block. It's a little bit off, not by, not by much though. So just checking that thing for squareness and straightness. Um, so as I'm as I'm looking at this thing, I, I want to check for visual errors that are on it, any kind of imperfections on it. Then I want to start looking at what's going on with the indicator itself. Now, if this was your own indicator, First thing that I always want to check on the indicator, actually even if this is one of ours that we use in the shop, I want to check to make sure that this back plate is on tight because that's where a lot of play comes in. Now this indicator is 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 not an expensive indicator. So this is not um, it's not a two hundred dollar indicator. This is one that we just use in our loaner boxes. Um, but what we can do is um, you know, we can we can get pretty good accuracy with one of these, but sometimes what we have to do is we pull these screws off. Uh, kind of check the back side of it and see what's going on. Is there is there a problem inside? Uh, is there excess wear? Uh, if the indicator is giving us large problems, the first thing I'm going to check is is do I have any shake in the shaft here? So as I as I move this through here, I'm, I'm just trying to shake it and see if I get any wiggle front, back, side to side on it. There's a small amount in there. Now, if it gave me large problems, I would probably try to do something else with it. Um, I'm going to grab a screwdriver and see if we can't just open up the back side of this thing. All right, so I found a screwdriver, and I'm going to take the back side of this uh, plate off. And a lot of times you can you can replace these with different plates. They have magnetic ones and um, different configurations for the back side. I don't think it's ever a bad idea to know how to use um, or know the inner workings of the tools that you're using every day. Uh, I found myself in the shop lots of times uh, helping other people calibrate their gauges because we didn't have a dedicated QC guy and um, just to make sure that everything was functioning well inside of it. Um, I don't think you have to have the $300, $200 indicator, um, but I do think that, that, that sometimes quality um, is, is noted in the cost of things. So here's how the inside of this thing works. And so we got the spring to bring tension on here. Uh, this pin or this drive dog keeps it from keeps it from rolling, keeps, in, keeps this from coming off the track. And I don't know if you can see it down inside of there. There is a gear, some gear teeth that is put on there. Let me turn the auto focus off. And see those teeth that are in there. And we've got couple of springs wound up inside of there and so it's just traveling on some gears. Now this should not ever be something that is oily. Okay. It should be something that is 
lubricated, but when I'm talking about it being lubricated, I'm talking about a dab of three-in-one oil or some gauge oil would be something that would be enough to take care of um, anything that it needs. So there's a better, better view of those gear teeth on there. Um, up here you've got a stopper just to keep it from going any further. If you take it off, it does allow it to travel down further. You want to make sure that doesn't happen. What you don't want is this thing getting off of that rack uh, gear that it's traveling on. So for most of us, we're not going to be doing mo much of anything with that stuff inside of there, uh, especially on an indicator like this. If this thing starts to give us problems, um, it's something that we're going to just um, probably trade out. Uh, it's not a high dollar indicator, so we don't. It's not something that we want to spend a ton of time working on. I mean, if this is if this is an Interrapid, something uh, of a little bit better quality, I might spend some time on it. But I'm not going to spend a lot of time on a, uh, a $15 indicator. So uh, just take you know and take those things into consideration when you're when you're messing with your tools. Okay. So I'm going to set that one aside and then I'm going to do kind of the same thing with one of our micrometers. I'm going to take it apart, look inside of it after we do some calibration on it. So I've grabbed this micrometer. It is a 2 to 3. It does measure in tenths. <clears throat> So on it, uh, it's got the ratchet. When I grab it and, and, and start to work on it, same thing, is I'm going to treat this thing um, as a precision tool. And you can tell it's already got some oil on it. Maybe you can tell that. Um, I can feel, even before I take a standard to it, that it can go through its range of travel pretty easily. I'll grab the standard out of the box. Clean it off. Same thing, I'll just take that piece of paper and just check the ends on it. Now, bring this in. Lock it. Check it. Now, it might be a little hard to read there. Turn it off, focus lock off. It's right on the zero. So no tense on that, so that lights. So that backlighting is getting in our way. So it's right at zero. So it's zero at the two inch mark. That does not mean that it is going to be zero anywhere else. So what I want to do when I calibrate this is I not only want to check it down to the two inch side, but I want to check it at the three inch side. So I'm going to go all the way to the extent of the travel. Now, I'm going a little bit past it. I'm going to grab a 3-inch gauge block, clean it off. Same thing, come in here. Now I'm really checking, as I before I'm even close to it, so my anvil is not extended out. Um, I want to feel the squareness of that gauge block up against the face of that, uh, the end of that micrometer. So I'm going to bring it in. Now if you'll look, as I use the 3 inch gauge block and I can pull it out, I am about two tenths off and it's kind of hard to see but I'm about two ten thousandths of an inch off as I as I check that at the extent of that so um, 
There's a couple of ways that we can make adjustments on our micrometer. First thing that we always want to look for is just is everything clean and taken care of. Uh, so I look down inside of there. I got my 40 thread per inch shaft. Um, everything's good and clean, brand new down inside of there. That's not an issue. If there is anything done in there, I can come in and do a little bit of cleanup if I need to. Um, I would watch using things like Q-tips. Q-tips are good, but you also have to watch for the debris that a Q-tip leaves behind. A um, little dab of 3-in-1 oil, gauge oil, and then we put it back inside of there. Everything on this should feel uh, and operate and be really smooth. Now, if I were to be consistently off by one to two thousandths of an inch, wherever I happen to be in my range of travel, so if I measure it with the standard and it's two inches one thou, I go out to my end of my travel and I get three inches one thou, I've got this hole back here. And what it is doing, or what it allows me to do, is to be able to make some adjustments but that is an adjustment that follows through everywhere. So if it's a, if it's at two inches, like so ours was two inches at the beginning, and that standard fit good. Three inches, it was it was off a couple of ten thousandths. So we had the ability to just just rotate this if our reading is consistent. So I can go. So if I was consistently off by uh, oh, one to two thousandths of an inch, I can I can make that adjustment here with this tool. Um, because this this is the sleeve is just on there and it does not um, it's not threading it on tighter or looser it's just it's just moving rolling around there okay so I come in here with the two inch gauge block or my standard and again don't be afraid on your own stuff to to check this make sure that they're right uh, you. You do not want to assume any of these things. So there I'm at two inches and I've got uh, zero tenths, so I'm dead on for right there. Um, I'm assuming, since I didn't change anything, uh, that the end will still be the same, so it'll probably be uh, two tenths off on the end. Uh, if I need to work on the end with, a, uh, with this part, I can. If I need to remove the ratchet, I can. Oftentimes, this is what we see happening to most of ours is that the uh, ratchet gets unscrewed, comes apart, and then we have problems just putting them back together. Uh, typically, what happens is nobody says anything about it, and then we have to go and try and find all the pieces for it. So it should ratchet just like a, a 3 8 ratchet and socket that you would turn a wrench with or that you would tighten or loosen a, a nut with. So um, that's the way that the micrometer works. Um, I would definitely recommend checking it at both extents. So on this one, this is two to three, so I'd check it at the two inch and the three inch side uh, just to make sure that you're um, accurate all the way through. Now, if you're measuring something that's 10,000 seven inch tolerance, it's not as big of a deal. Uh, it's also not really the right tool to be measuring it with. On some of those 10,000 tolerance thing, go ahead and just use your calipers for that. All right, um, so that takes care of a little bit of, of chapter nine on just some calibration. Um, all of our tools are going to kind of follow the same way of knowing uh, the ratios that, that are uh, covered within them or the ranges that are covered within them, uh, taking a variation um, of measurements across it to look for, um, look for accuracy and consistency inside of our parts, uh, whether you're using a travel indicator, whether you're using a micrometer, whether you're using calipers. Um, gauge blocks are a great place to start because they're a, they're a known, they're a given. There's, uh, there's no variation with inside of them with that, wh other than just temperature. Um, so find something that's a standard. If you can find something that's 10 times the standard uh, or the 10 times the measurement of what you're trying for, that's a great standard for us to try for. Uh, it's not something we can always do. Now checking something on the caliper or the micrometer um, or an indicator with a CMM, which is a, is a, a very accurate tool, it uh, doesn't make sense for, for hard gauging. Uh, so um, you know, we want to make sure we're, we're using the, the right tools and having realistic functions for, for what it is that we're doing. Okay, um, I'm going to post this and then also do another one for Chapter 10, and um, I will have that ready in just a sec.